Hey YouTube, Slingblade98 here. Um, it's been a pretty slow time for wrestling lately. TNA is not doing a whole lot, just putting on semi-decent episodes of Impact and uh, pretty terrible pay-per-views. So that pretty much leaves me WWE to talk about since I don't know how to watch ROH or Japanese wrestling. And none of the other indie companies are really televised, so I'm here to talk about King of the Ring today. Um, anyways, as far as this goes, I thought it was it had some good matches, and pretty much most of the segments were bad. I would give this a probably a ratio of 65% good and 35% bad. Um, it's, I would have to agree with people who say that match quality isn't the only relevant thing to a match's overall rating. It's also storyline, crowd reaction, and fallout. Um, a classic example would be the Ric Flair vs. Shawn Michaels match at WrestleMania. Um, solid action in the ring, pretty good. I would get, I would have given it probably four stars otherwise. But since it had awesome build up, a great angle, um, two legends behind it, and that classic end of Raw the Monday after WrestleMania, um, it was a five star match, no doubt about it. So. That just shows you how much things besides the overall quality of the match can add to it. Like, so, but there is actually exceptions, as crazy as that might sound. Um, a good example, well, it kind of, the way I would put it is, it's nice to have something new, fresh, and spontaneous without the precursor of a storyline adding predictability to the equation. So. Um, a good example of this would be CM Punk versus Chris, uh, CM Punk versus Matt Hardy, and wait, CM Punk, yeah, CM Punk versus Matt Hardy and MVP versus Chris Jericho. Um, Chris Jericho and Matt, um, sorry, Chris Jericho and CM Punk both won, and they advanced to the uh, semifinals. Anyways, these were both good, uh, probably two and three quarter stars and three star matches. Um, I enjoyed them both, and it was nice to see something fresh. I mean, I enjoy storylines, and they add quite a bit to matches, but, uh, well, I don't know. Um, as I said, there was also quite a bit of bad stuff at this episode of Raw, more than its fair share. Finley versus Kali. Kali is absolutely terrible. He, know, he can only do about four moves, and Finley doesn't really work too well with him. All he can do is get squashed by and then have Horn Swoggle interfere and do some Shillelagh shots. Uh, Kali got disqualified. Bad end to a bad match. Uh, Regal beat Horn Swoggle. No need to say anything about that. Then, what actually really surprised me was. Um, Regal, uh, after Regal beat Finley, he actually won the tournament. I thought whoever was the winner of CM Punk versus Chris Jericho would just win this because I thought it's just an afterthought. There's no chance in hell Finley or Chris Jericho, uh, sorry, Finley or Regal is going to win this. So um, I thought they were just going, it's pretty much whoever was going to be the winner of that semifinal match was just going to be pretty much King of the Ring, but Regal actually won this. And unlike it was with Booker T in 2006, which was the last King of the Ring, this actually goes well with his character. He plays the snooty British guy, and this whole King gimmick will actually add well to his Raw General Manager and snooty British guy gimmick. So, um, anyways, um, Regal's actually uh, quite a good technical wrestler. If you watched his match with Randy Orton, the Raw before this, it was short, but it was actually quite a good match. Uh... Wow, that was a weird end of that song. Um, anyways, a uh, fairly good episode of Raw. Surprised to see Regal win. It was something fresh, and I uh, I thought Triple H was actually going to be in this and just use this as a catapult for momentum for the Backlash pay-per-view. I thought he was just going to win this, squash everyone else, maybe overcome some big heel like Umaga, and then use this as momentum for Backlash, but he wasn't in this. So, um... Yeah, it's just nice to see someone new in this. Um, anyways, this episode of Raw also had some bad stuff. The political like humor thing with uh, Barack Obama impersonator versus the Hillary Clinton one. Um, this is pretty much just exactly what they did with Donald Trump versus Rosie O'Donnell. You know, two 
uh, people dressed up as them coming in there doing a stupid comedy match. Um, and they actually had the presidential candidates on there, which surprised the hell out of me. I thought they were just going to have the people on there doing some gag on them. But this kind of raises the question to me. After appearances by candidates on shows like The Daily Show, um, Saturday Night Live, and Monday Night Raw, it seems like this race has become less about who's running the country and more about just pop culture crap. So it kind of creates a doubt in my mind whether anyone who appears on such a show would be fit to run the country but anyways I would like I would like McCain Clinton or Obama as president uh, I don't really have a specific political affiliation so politics are in this video cuz they were in that episode anyways stupid then they had they had like a thing of it where they created them on Smackdown vs Raw 2008 and then showed it on there uh, that was kinda gay so uh, man. Um, there was also a decent match between Carlito and Hardcore Holly. Kind of short, not much to it. Good match. Both drop kicks, but or drop kicks by both men were great and very great backcracker at the end. He just popped right off him. Uh, I hope Holly didn't hurt himself. I don't know if he was just selling hurting his back or not. But anyways, uh, good luck to Hardcore Holly if he is hurt. Um, anyways, I didn't actually watch the main event, which was the eight-man tag. It was, I believe, Chavo, um, Edge, and, uh, I don't know, look it up on WWE.com. They fought Kane, Undertaker, um, Triple H, and Cena. So pretty much just put the rest of the main heels in there, and you can pretty much figure it out. Um, anyways, I was pretty much able to predict how this went easily. I didn't watch it because I knew it would either be the stereotypical WWE style tag team match end where they would have the heel, uh, sorry, the face be isolated like it's reminiscent of DX, think like Shawn Michaels getting beat up the whole time and then Triple H coming in and nailing two punches, Orton Edge both getting up and then the first one to get up after the punches would get spine buster. I assumed it'd be something like that. Heels won, they probably cheated to win. Uh, I didn't see this, not gonna rate it, probably was okay to crummy um anyways uh thank you for watching sling blade 98 out on a side note because i did play music in this video and i have gotten flack for that in the past please anyone because i respect your opinion my viewers and subscribers please tell me why this ruins my videos because i have got negative uh, i've got negative flack for that people saying it ruins my videos I haven't actually stopped though because no one's given me a good reason why it does. So, if you are one of those people like J.K. Gatling or something, uh, please tell me why because I respect all your opinions. Thank you for watching Slingblade 98 Up.